Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to create the database and the page for invoices functionality in our client portal application. Invoices is really critical because you have a marketing agency that is doing a service for your client and they need to be able to build that agency. And this is just part of the portal experience. They're keeping everything in one place. So let's get started with our database. Here we are in our table. We're going to cre create a new table and it's going to be called invoices. Now bear with me because we do need to create a good bit of fields and there are some new ones for the first time, but I thought it was important that we do it together to keep building this build along experience. So let's go to edit field and get started with our invoice ID. And for this file type, we're actually going to use a really cool one called auto number. And that is just going to assign a number to every record for us automatically. And that's just a great way to create your invoice ID. After that, we are going to assign this invoice to a project. So it's going to be project, and then we're going to go to a linked record, and it's going to be projects. And we can only assign it to one project. After that, we're going to assign this project to a client. So we're going to find a link to another record, and it is going to be a user, or in this case, a company. Awesome. Now we need status for this and for the status, it is going to be a single select, but we have some different statuses for invoices. So let's fill that in. We're going to update this to gray because that makes more sense. And then we'll say unpaid here. So red for unpaid, yellow for payment sense green for payment received, and then gray for void. And then by default, we're going to say it's unpaid. And then we're just going to label this invoice status just to give us more information there. Let's do amount. And this is going to be a currency. And we're going to format this how we would like to format it. So that's good. We really want a decimal place. So let's get the decimals out of there. And that should be good otherwise. Let's go to invoice date. We're going to find a date file type right there. That's good. And then we'll do any no notes related to this invoice. It could be long text. If there's a payment link, let's include that as well. And a payment link is a URL. So let's see if they have that field type and they do. That way the uh, software can format it special for us and know that it's a URL. When you click on it, hyperlink to that URL. And then we'll come, we might need to add some more like overdue functionality or something like that. But I think for now, this is good. I'm actually going to just add in some temp data here quick, and then we'll get over the software and start building out the project invoice experience. So hang with me for a sec as I speed through this. You know what, just finishing this up, I just remembered that we forgot one more field and that's actually going to be the invoice itself, which will be an attachment. So you can upload that invoice. So let's add that and then just add in some temp data for that. And I think we're looking pretty good here. It added a new record here. I'm just going to right click, delete that. And then we're all set there. So let's go over to software now and build up this project invoices experience. Remember on our project detail page, we already built that button, but this button, we never linked it anywhere. And matter of fact, this files button should be gray. So let's turn that gray. And then eventually what we're going to do is create a project invoice page where when we click on this button, it's going to go to that project invoice page. So let's go to back to our project details. And in our project details, let's find our files button. And we're just going to change this around going to make it that gray and then we're going to go to the font color and then change that. Uh, that's a little bit light, lighter gray, but I do like that. So let's just follow suit here with the background color. There we go. That's fantastic. Now just double checking what we left off with, with the invoice details page. But this is a very good clue for us because we know that in order to get there and to send the user to a page that only contains the invoices for this project, we need to do something very special. 
And that's going back to that secret or more professional tip that we used with that project detail block, right? In order to show or bring a user to a project detail page, we need to include that project detail block, which means for this invoice page, we're also going to need to include that project detail block at the top. And then at the bottom, we could do a listing, which includes the invoices that relate to that project. All right. So for that, we can just copy our project files page again, use that as a template, and then from there, we'll modify it. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to say duplicate. And I'm going to go into my settings. And I'm going to say project invoices. And the visibility is, again, just going to be logged in users. And that's going to be good. Now we have this project detail block, which is great. That's what we needed. Otherwise, we want to add a different listing here. This type of listing could work, but quite frankly, I think we should maybe try a different block, maybe like a table block, show you how to use that for the first time, and then we'll connect it. So let's see anything else that's needed on the top here. I think it could be cool to have like a total build amount here, like a total amount that we've built this client in general, but that's going to take us a little bit of some formatting to get there. So why don't we come or not formatting, but like formulas in our database to get there. So let's focus on building this table experience and then maybe we'll add that at the end. So let's go into our files here. And actually I'm just going to delete this block and I'm going to find a new listing block. And the list block that I want to find is a table actually. So I'm just going to go into the table and I'm going to pull up our table block. Now, once our table block is there, we do want to sort it by invoices. And we do need to add conditional filters for this because again, we only want to show the invoices that relate to this project. And so we're going to go and add a conditional filter and we're going to say the project includes any of current records projects, project name right there. So that way we're only pulling in invoices that relate to this project detail block. All right. So that's very important there. And then let's get this filtering uh, away from now. We don't need that. We can get rid of the search bar and we can get rid of the filter right there. And let's do the content now. And so for the content, let's start off with our invoice ID. All right. And so this is a image field. We don't need an image field here. We can go right here and go ID right there. All right. And we could say invoice ID. And then for this, let's do text. And this can be amount. Amount. And you see the table, it's formatted it nicely for us. Yeah, I think that's a good one for this block. And then we have the invoice date. So invoice date. That could be a text, invoice date. And then we can have the due date, which is a text again. Invoice due dates. Do we have our due date on here? Looks like we don't have a due date on this. So let's go back to our table and let's add in invoice due date. Invoice, invoice due date. And this is going to be a date field again. Create that. And then we'll just pick some dates in here so it's not empty. All right, go back to softer. We're going to, need to go back to our source and refresh that so that field comes back up. Now let's find that due date. There it is. Excellent. Due date. And then let's also add one more for status. And that's for that. Let's do a tag and we'll say invoice status. Awesome. That's looking good. Status. Great. Now for this invoice ID, look how much room it's taken up. We don't need all that room there. So let's go into the styling and make the width just a lot smaller there. That's good. And then let's see invoice ID amounts. Okay. So that's looking good. Now let's add some action buttons so you can edit or view this invoice. So the first one I want to do is I want to go in here and edit. I want to go to my action buttons and this is going to be an item button because this is the top bar button. This is an item button over here. And then an item on click is when I click on the whole row. So I want to add an add item button and I want this to be edit record, All right? So that's going to be edit invoice. All right. Then the invoice has been updated successfully. Now let's add our fields for this. The first field that we have is the file for the invoice. That's great. All right. And then we have the amount, the amount. Let's use a number for this right there. Say amount. 
And then we'll have a due date, which is going to be a date picker right there. And we'll say due dates, due dates. And then we'll have a status. So that'll be a drop down for a status. Status. Again, it pick, pull, pulled in all of our statuses from our database. Our payment link is going to be a URL. That's important. Payment link right there. Payment link. All right. And then notes. And for notes, we can say that this is optional and it's a long text. And then we optional means not required. All right. So that should complete our edit functionality. Let's add another button here for view, except we see here, we don't actually have a view page yet for invoices. So we can't do this yet because we don't have an invoice detail page and that's going to take a little bit longer. So we're going to save that for another lesson, but I do want to finish this off and go back to our project details and then connect it to that page that we just created. So now when we click on invoices, we're going to go to the project invoices page. And it will look like that. So let's see what this looks like. And then on another lesson, we'll create the actual invoice detail page. And now we're seeing all the invoices for this project right here. And matter of fact, I did tell you that I wanted to show you a little bit of a formula field. So let's knock that out quick and then we'll get on to the next lesson. All right. So for this functionality, we need to go to our projects. So we need to add this new field or column here. And it's going to be total amount build. And for this, we're actually going to use a rollup functionality. And so we're going to go to the invoices table and we're going to choose the amount. And then we're going to add one more thing here. We're going to say where status is not void. And then that's going to pull in all of the invoices for this project that have not been voided out and give us the sum of those values. Okay, I'm gonna create this. And then look at this, total amount built right there. So again, we use a rollup field and we use the invoices that which have a relationship with the projects. And we said, go find all the invoices that relate to this or belong to this project. Sum all of the values, disregard the ones that include void and show it here. Fantastic. Now, if we go back into our invoice detail page or our project invoices, sorry, we go right here. We're going to add content. And this content right here is going to be total amount build right there. Fantastic. And then we'll just make this bigger, even though it's not showing up right now. Show right there. Fantastic. And let's just make it bigger now that we can actually see it. Total amount built. There it is. Let's do it one more time so we can preview that experience. See it live. And $3,000, $3,000. Boom. Advanced functionality, but it took us just a couple of minutes to do. Again, software, you could do so much, and that's the exciting part. Hopefully, as you're going through this course, you're just learning what you can do for your own purposes. There's so much that you can do to customize and create a great experience for you and your clients. So I hope you're as excited as I am. Otherwise, let's get on to the next lesson and finish this off. We're so close. We're in the last half of this course. So stick with me and I'll see you there.